لو Hey Trey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Oh, super. Good, good. <sighs> yeah, we had a super interesting meeting the other night, Andrea, with that Georgia crew. Oh, excellent. I'm have so glad. Any of them? Huh? Have you heard from any of them? Um, I've had a couple of uh, of emails this week, but nothing the specific. It was just sort of, yeah, but but they're just such a great group. Definitely a good group. Great energy. Um, you know, what it really illustrated, though, and I can share a copy of the the recording, it really illustrated the lack of clarity <laughs> on PSF. Um, nobody had a clue. I mean, to be quite honest, and and they're certified in it from that, you know, that previous Zoom really didn't, it's not effective. Um, you know, it, it, it for me, it confirmed that that's definitely not a good way to do it, even though it makes sense. Yes, they have those skills as instructors and that should just because the the language involved and the it's so it's a kind of a confusing thing to um, um, process. I just think that it um, I mean, we got clarity to it eventually, but it just really showed that coming out of just doing that that one session is not enough for an instructor, in my opinion. Um, so. What was the what was the thinking originally for um that it's automatic for an L3 or higher, but not for an L2? Well, probably just that they have more experience and time with the ACA. And you know, with CPL, it's not automatic. Like you have to take the course. There is no automatic. Right. But I would imagine that's the thinking. And it just, yeah, I'm sure it'll come up tonight. Um, once we get into it, but uh, you know the this the, in the ACA we've had this assumption that you know if you're you're responsible for all the curriculum below and you should know all that stuff, but people just don't. And if you don't interact with that curriculum, you just don't know it. Um, you don't know how to deliver it. You don't understand the nuances of it. Like you know PSF, you can deliver a PSF course to twelve people. So you're yep. saying a level one instructor, or a level two instructor who can maybe handle three. And if they had five people to, to teach, they, they're challenged by it. We all know that. We've all been there. Everybody is. Yeah. And yet they can take on 12 people to deliver all that content that quickly. So, you know, there's just a lot of uh, there's more to it, I think, than than meets the eye. And I think that we just. Again, and I'm sure I'll share this over. And this is just an informal meeting, so I can repeat myself I guess, as many times as I want. Um, you know, the it, it shines the light on on uh, what we need to focus on and refine. Like the PSF is a great idea. There's great stuff in there. There's also stuff that probably doesn't need to be in there. And the way it's presented is confusing. Um, and part of the reason that I incorporated it into this CPL is to get people to start to see it because otherwise it's not going to change if we all don't now that we're all starting to look at it right you know we're starting to have these conversations this is how we get that hopefully we well, start I'm, to I'm absolutely that invested in being part of that conversation yeah and then you have all the other policy things going on that I know you're a part of um where we're yeah we have some op huge opportunities for us huge to really change the way we've been doing this and actually connect with people and not just yep. give them a bunch of safety information. Like that doesn't work. We know that doesn't work. Like yeah. we have the evidence, we have the stats. So like, let's try and connect in a different way. Um, yep. So anyways, all right, well, uh, let's see. Well, what? and I, and I, and Brett told me he met with you and Anna the other night on some of the. This morning we actually had a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, some of the things happening in some of the states have implications. Cool. So I'm going to, looks like, the, oh, Anna's popping in. <laughs> oh, I scared her away. <laughs> and I don't know Joan. Hi, Joan. Hello. 
Hi. Hi, Miss Anna. How's it going? Tooling along. Welcome, Gray's with us, David. I kind of know some of these people. It's kind of, I guess that's good. <laughs> Did they, you know them? Yeah. Mm hmm. Maybe that's why they're connecting with the ACC. I didn't tell them I was doing this. This was <laughs> this was came through the SEIC newsletter. So it's cool to see that people are connecting engaged. With that a little bit. Yeah, they're engaged. Yeah, pretty cool. I like it. I wore mascara to teach a sup lesson and teach rescues today. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that, that work out dumb. for you? That was dumb. It was just left over. These are <laughs> challenges. Challenges of of paddle sports instructors yeah our lifestyle yeah. choices <laughs> it's hilarious well just you know as, as people are coming in there's i have nothing formal for you this is just a listening session and i'm taking notes and we're recording this and whether we use this exact recording or portions of it or it's just a resource for me to compile a file that we can share with everybody not a file but a folder that we could share with everybody um, as resources for delivering this course. So that's kind of the the intent. And, I, um, you know, I can share some, some stuff that I have. We can share the screen and we could go through the document if you all think that that's worth doing. Um, or we can just start fielding questions and just have a discussion. I'm happy either way. Um, it'd be great if people could raise their hands since we have this amount when they want to say something and uh, try and stay on top of that. And I was thinking about maybe somebody can help me with this. Is there a way to get folks emails that they could all be in one spot? We could just put them in the chat. Well, I thought about that, but then you still have to pull each email out of that. And then I'm just you trying to- Copy the chat at the end before you, before you log out. But you still can't just load that into your email, like you, into your- your addressees, you'd still have to individually pull them out. I'm wondering if there's a, yep, that, that was my fallback, Andrew. And I appreciate that. I was just trying yeah. to see if there's a, a shortcut to that. Right on. Well, you could share a Google, you could create a Google doc tray and share it with us. As long as we all had edit, edit. Um, yeah, just mark it. Yeah. Share it Anyone with you like how. A uh, like link in the chat, chat. just like, well, could, you do, yeah. could somebody it, do that real quick? Yeah, I'll do it real quick. And then you just click that link. And if you want to get, you know, some information, some deeper information on this, and then I'm thinking about getting Kelsey to put a folder up on the website somewhere in that instructor resource thing that we're getting close to having, <laughs> where you could pull some suggested ways to do things. Because we really didn't, when we wrote this, we really didn't want to tell you how to deliver this course. We just wanted to have the, the criteria for the course. Yeah, for those that just jumped in again, this is uh, totally informal. So uh, I have no program set for you on this. This is start asking questions and let's get it sorted out. You must have an interest because you're here and happy to answer any questions. And for those that have maybe done one, um, I know Anna's done one. Michael, did you do one yet? Not yet. I'm okay. getting ready to in May, and that's partly why I'm here. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, we, you know, we intentionally did a soft launch so that we could have these discussions and do some refinement. And we can refine this thing right here and now. And I'll put a presentation together for the SEIC meeting and, and get the refinements passed if that's what we need to do. Um, so... Is everybody okay with just kind of a potpourri and just conversation? Or do you want more structure? I see some nodding, thumbs up. And then if we don't get to your question, you know, I can, we can look at the doc and there are some things that have, that I've highlighted in my head at least that have come up that if we don't touch on those, I'll make sure that we touch on them. So yeah, who wants to just jump in? Well, I'll start. I think I know I've gotten a lot of questions. So I've delivered a CPL and uh, I love the CPL. I love the program. Uh, the question that I get most of the time is people want to know who can offer the CPL. Yeah. And I think that might be a good place 
it may or may not be a good place to start, but since so many folks asked that question, I figured probably some folks here have that question as well. Right on. Yeah. So who can deliver <clears throat> DPL is any level. Maybe we better let me pull up on my other screen just so I don't misquote anything. There we go. So it is. Not that one. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Bear with me one second. I'm sorry. So it's any level two instructor, trainer, or above, for sure. Um, I'm just trying to pull this up. I have the PSF up right now. So give me one second. Okay. So what it says is any level two or higher instructor, trainer, or a level two or higher instructor with the CPL certification. So as, and then you have to have the credentials to be able to deliver paddle sports safety facilitator in at least two of three disciplines. And you have to acknowledge a familiarity with the content and the mechanics of the paddle sports safety facilitator. That is how it's written on the document. Um, does that answer your question, Anna? So, for example, yeah, is, I, yeah, I've got the PSF. Want. Yeah, I've got the PSF for for all three craft already. I've got awesome. that endorsement. Um, but I clearly I've not attended one of the CPL classes, so I haven't yep. seen the how it is presented and or gotten the nuance of the different ways it could be presented. Um, and I don't have anything that looks like a certification or endorsement for CPL. There so, is no endorsement for CPL. First okay. of all. So if you're a level two instructor who has completed the CPL, you can offer it. Okay. Yeah, there isn't that next step endorsement thing. That's that's one of the things that's different about this. Trying okay. in, 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 in the vein and the intention of simplicity and clarity. So if we are a level two instructor and we've been through this course, we are... Um, trusting the process that you already know how to instruct, we're just dialing you in on this specific content. But you do have to have the PSF endorsement. Yes, because you have to be able to deliver PSF. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the intention of this is originally when I wrote the original document, even the ITs had to have. Uh, done a PSF and have the PSF endorsement, even though they're they can deliver it without anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, I got pushback on that, and 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 that's okay. And I I agreed with the pushback, but the reason I did that is because, in my view, this this uh, um, this process is serving two probably three different stakeholders. One is the people that get experience it, the access we're going to give to people. Um, it meets the needs of uh, a lot of organizations and camps and parks and scouting groups and things like that, and even just clubs um, that we really don't have a fit for. It actually really meets those things. We've been kind of putting them into things and compiling things that aren't really what they're looking for, and they just fall into that. And then it was geared at trying to shift the way that we present curriculum and trying to clean up the way that we present curriculum, although it may not feel like it at the beginning, but that's okay. And it was trying to shine a light on paddle sports safety facilitator and the fact that it needs to be revisited, okay? Like it's, it's a great concept, it's a needed thing, but it's very confusing and people aren't familiar with it and our ITs aren't familiar with it, most instructors aren't familiar with it, and yet this is our base level entry point for our curriculums, and people don't know it. So instead of just assuming that they'll figure it out before they offer one of these courses, we put in there that you have to already have gone through it and done it, even if you're a level four instructor. I wanted it to be for ITs too, but I got voted down on that, and that's okay. Yes, Michael. 
I agree that it's probably time to sort of rework the PSF program a little bit, but uh, I, I think this is a, a great start. This, this program that you put together, I think it's really good. I'm, I'm still tripping over a little bit and I'm finding confusion out in the field by people looking at our descriptions of it, of that, the skills uh, assessment prerequisite, you know, I, I, talking with you i think we can embed that within it but i'm not so sure given that it's a prerequisite if we should be doing that or or how that's worded if we need to maybe tweak that a little bit okay do you have a suggestion on how you would tweak that it's not call it a prerequisite call it uh, level one training rather than an assessment perhaps Are you trying to say, Michael, that you want to <clears throat> incorporate the the assessment into the CPL itself? Yes. <laughs> so then you would also be giving, if that's the case, if you were doing a, a, conducting a CPL with all three crafts, you would also be giving folks their assessments in level one assessments in all three crafts. Or in whatever crafts we're using. Or whatever crafts. Two out of three, but <clears throat> yeah, yeah. The idea being. Mm -hmm. really sort of rolling the ps or the 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 skills assessment the psf and cpl all kind of together in one sort of coordinated training mm -hmm. yeah so uh it, what i would say to that is i hear that totally um but i don't think i i i really the cpl is about leadership the skills need to be there already. We can't be doing a blended thing because it gets too confusing. People get to choose their craft. They have the skills that they bring to it. Will their skills get a little bit better in a CPL? Yeah, but we already as an organization have this default mechanism in our, in our courses to make them about teaching people skills when they're supposed to be teaching them how to teach, or in this case, teaching them about leadership. And, and because we're all good at skills and we like to teach skills. And so we do that for everybody that we're around. We can't not do it. Like we always are struggling with that. I think we just want to keep teaching people, but that's not what a lot of these courses are about. Like the, our instructor courses are about instruction. They're not about people getting better as paddlers that are there as candidates. And it's the same thing for CPL. And so what I would encourage you to think about is that the CPL is a standalone award it's a two day program, okay? If you don't have the prerequisites to meet it, you can build that out. You can add a third day. And right? that's what we've done, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what I would suggest, and I'll share these kind of, this is the stuff I'll share, but like yeah, but a like, really good way to do really it with, CPL, with, with CPL, you can have uh, eight hours of it can be virtual. That's a lot, um, but four hours works great. Like there's lots of stuff you can do with a four hour virtual. So you have a pre-course four hours. Day one is a PSF. Day two is the skills assessment, right? And then the second half of that, now you're into your CPL. And then the third day is CPL. Now you've covered all the, the time allotments and you've done in three days with that half day of pre-course stuff. And, and you've met all those requirements. And I think you can deliver actually a pretty effective course. And by virtual, it doesn't mean, just real quick, Anna, by virtual, we don't mean necessarily, or at least I don't mean, um, that you have to have some test thing that you're taking. Like, to me, those aren't really that effective. Um, it could be something as simple as, hey, maintain a wind journal for the next 14 days. Go out and see what the wind's doing a couple times a day, and then think about how you could change the way the wind impacts you. Or, hey, plan a trip to the grocery store and write down how you plan that trip and then how you execute it and what components you're keeping in that. Just things to get them in mindsets for when they show up to the course that it's not all new. Like that's what you can do in your virtual stuff. Yes, Anna. Oh, well, Michael just put it, Michael, you said oh. you put it in as a four day. That's what I did when I delivered the, right. the, the um, I did a Paddle Sports Leadership Academy with Tennessee Riverline last year and we did it four days. Uh, and we had three instructors uh, delivering one that was a, uh, and we were able to do it in for deliver the PSF, the skills assessments, and the CPL, and it worked great. And we had so much fun. Yeah. 
Thanks, Hannah. That's kind of how I've set it up for this one too. So, yeah, share my screen. Can you all see this here? Yep. Is that moving? Okay. And I can share this with you, with you all, if we can get again. If you want to, Andrea, put a Andrea. Did you put that link into the chat? Yeah, I put, it, can, I put it in a couple of times so that people who came later would still be able to access. Yeah. It. So you could pop your email in there, and I can share all this with you. And we're going to drop it into a folder. Um, this was a reply to an email actually from Michael and uh, Mike Aronoff, and I kind of answered some questions for him. But down here, we look at you know the ways that a couple of ways that you could run one of these as far as how those days could break out. Four days is obviously going to be better than three, but we know a lot of folks are going to have a little bit of pushback against four. Um, but this is a way that you could do four days and have it be quite successful. And for these folks, this was the lead event I did in Iowa. They, they were pretty inexperienced. Most of those people were inexperienced paddlers and we were able to bring them up to that level within those four days. And you can see here's a three-day version of it a little bit lower down. Who else has a question? Those are good. Good. I hope that helps a little bit, starting to understand it, or at least the reasoning behind it, at least. <laughs> um, I do want to play with that language a little bit, Michael. I just don't know how I feel like we want them to have some skills at that point. Yeah, Jake Fitzroy. Hey, yo. Um, hey, um, I sent a few of the participants from Florida up to Iowa and got rave reviews. Oh, cool. Um, so, and I'll Great. be here in Tampa when you come back down in November. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, so I hear you on the camps thing. Do you know if the American Camp Association is going to honor this? Have we talked to them at all? It, it, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the curriculum, but I know they... They usually want like level one kayak instructor certs. Yeah. So and, and, yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, and I'm I, the answer is no. I haven't spoken with them. I did bring this up to Beth Wiegan at one point. I know she was affiliated with that group um, pretty extensively, and we have a position now on the board. Is that okay to talk about, Anna? our kind of national kind of outreach person? Uh, I'm not sure what you're going to say, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robin's role. Like that seems like a oh. thing for Robin. Like yeah. to find out if these entities that that need, you know, approval in a large scale, um, that we're all speaking the same language and coming from the same place instead of just random individuals talking to them and making their pitch. Um, my, my personal view, Jake, is that, mm -hmm. It, it could be quite appropriate for him, actually, if we can uh, present this to him. I think that a lot of these entities have been pitched something from an, an instructor or an IT, um, all probably in good faith, but trying to fit it into what they need. My guess is that most camps aren't doing instruction. And in most camps, the, the bottom line is that people don't paddle in the level one environment. Like, that's just not happening. Like level one instructor means you can take somebody on a pond where there's nothing happening, no boats, no wind, no current, no nothing. That's I, not realistic. Right. Well, with little, like eight year olds, it is. And um, so I'll, I'll say asterisk on that. A lot of camps with little well, kids. Well, sure. Like but, they're, but they're still going to go out and do other stuff, is my point. Even right. those eight year olds I, are going to go yeah. paddle when there's wind, when they're done. Like right. so yeah. what I'm saying is that. Not that I'm not saying that the level one isn't fine, but the reality is it's not what those camps need. What they need is somebody that can get people on the water and have fun with them in mm -hmm. mild conditions that you have easy access to emergency services, they're close to shore, and you can do it in multiple craft. You're not limited by the fact that you're just a kayaker. Now you can't take the people that want to come out in the canoe. It, that that is a huge a huge bonus, and there are many many camps that have kayaks, canoes, and paddleboards. Right, we got right. Three that we run that have that those three craft. Yeah, and, and then if they, um, if they yeah. do need instruction, then they can go. You can still like to me. This is the jump off point, right? To figure out if if paddle sport leadership is what you're into, and then if you want to go become an instructor, then you get become an instructor. Or if you need to supplant your staff with both community paddle sport leaders, and you still want a couple instructors to do instruction. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you could kind of look at it, structuring it that way as well. So that's, um, 
I got that down because that's a big one. I appreciate that question. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yes, Joan. Okay. Um, scouting BSA yeah. is now requiring that anytime you take a group out on the water, that you have an instructor. Yeah. Now, will this cover something like that? I'm in central Pennsylvania. There are no instructor trainers anywhere nearby. I'm an instructor, but I can't, I'm not an instructor trainer. Right. So um, all so, of the sudden, this is a change this year. All of the sudden, people who are much better paddlers than me can't take the scouts out on the water if they don't have an instructor certification. Yeah. Yeah. So again, what I would say is that this will not cover that requirement yet because this isn't what their requirement is, right? So this is new. And this is why I work so hard to bring this forward and get this going because this is so needed because it, it right now we're saying have them instructors and they're probably saying level two instructors so that they can meet the environment uh, qualifications for what the scouts are doing. And, you know, that might not be the appropriate, really what they really need. And so, but that conversation has to have with Boy Scouts of America, and that's, you know, on tap. Just as a point of, of clarification, Trey, I, I had yeah. to dig into this a little bit this year. I think it's actually a level one cert requirement on paper for Boy Scouts. And then okay. above that, it's per, per the trip requirements. So I think there is some judgment above that, but they're just wanting folks to have an instructor cert to yeah. take them out and give them the badge. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. Yeah, so this, yeah. What else we got? How do you guys promote the craft? Like it says multi-craft. Can you do just stand-up paddleboard or just kayak? Or do you have to say this is kayak and sup if you're not certified in canoe? How have you differentiated that in the past? Well, you can, um, the award requires you to have a PSF and at least two craft. And in, in the, the criteria for the award, you will be asked to demonstrate your ability to do rescues or, or instruct, um, give directions for people to, to do rescues in multiple craft. So you have to have at least one more there. Um, if it's all or all sups and you just got to borrow somebody's canoe, then that's what you do. Um, but it is multi-craft. You don't have to have um, proficiency in the other craft, right? You just have to be able to understand how to rescue them, which is what PSF is. You know, you're, that's the ability to get around good enough or the understanding of how to direct somebody how to do that rescue. Oh, and guess what? They're all pretty similar. Have you done it where it's just kayak and sup because you only have to have two or is it always open to all three? I guess that's part of my question too. So is what always open to all three? So the instructors have to, and it could be any two. So do you promote it that way though? Like how do you well, prevent someone from signing well, up if they intend to bring a canoe, but you don't have PSF and canoe? Yeah, then I wouldn't promote it as such. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's up to the provider. You promote it however you, as the provider, want to promote it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Yep. And yeah, you bring up a really good point. That, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Anna. Sorry. Well, you bring up a really good point, Rachel. Just a good thing to double click on is that whoever the provider is, it's like what, so um, you know, now I have, because I've gone through the program, I have a PSF in canoe and a level one skills assessment in canoe, and I'm an IT in both SUP and 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 kayak, so I could I could offer the the multi craft. Um, I still prefer to have someone who's an expert, like an, an instructor in canoe, be there because I feel like it's a higher quality for me. It's a higher quality offering. So it's um, but it is important that that we under that everyone understands that it's based on the CPL isn't just like this is what it is, and you know you who is offering is going to customize it so to speak with yeah, how so maybe a line item doing. in those accompanying notes that that will build for this program and this will be another thing that'll be brand new that that doesn't exist for any of our stuff is some accompanying oh that was weird um michael just shared his screen with everybody are you, are you showing us something michael
<laughs> you're muted, Michael. I'm assuming you're showing us something. I'm trying to see if I can get that off. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, so anyways, um, but we could put a, a note in there that, you know, that you need to check with your provider to see which craft are being offered or something to that effect, Rachel. You know, this is, and I fully understand that whenever we, as we all know, as learners, right, it's confusing <laughs> when you learn something new, right? So try and use chopsticks with your left hand and eat for the next week. Try that. It's going to be super <laughs> frustrating and it's, you're going to struggle with it. We're all going to struggle with it um, as we work through it. But I think we, as we work through it, it'll become more comfortable. This we're really trying to emphasize this idea of, of cross-discipline, multidiscipline, to really start to bring people together more instead of being stuck in these, I'm a kayaker, I'm a canoeist, oh, I'm only a sea kayaker, you have to have a 16-foot boat to be in my, like we're trying to break that all down and get more real about it and connect with people at all levels, we're all paddlers. And so we want to be able to have these things kind of flowing back and forth. And I think some of it will be a little confusing at first, to your point, Rachel. And so we just have to be, you know, uh, patient and intentional in the way that we talk about it. And Michael. the more people offer it, the more uh, feedback we'll get from everyone. That's right. And the more hopefully we can refine it with your ideas and yeah, and feedback from participants. So Whenever we change, we we, we uh, intro or someone intros a curriculum or criteria or we refine it. It's it's like that until someone else comes up with a better idea to refine it. And I think as SCIC, we want folks to remember that when we put something forward, it's not gonna you know it's not like this is the way it is forever. Uh, it we have the ability to change and refine as we go. And we plan for sure. on it. Yeah, for sure. You know, the one thing we're, we're, we can't have perfection. We just need to get stuff out. I think for so long, we've all just wanted it. And I know me personally coming up with this, I've been thinking about this for years and wanted it to be all perfect. And I couldn't get any input from people. And then I was uh, I'm like, you know what? We're just going to put it out there and we're going to start doing it. And we'll see how it goes. It got approved unanimously. And then here we are now, and you all are having good input and questions, and, and I'm sure we'll see you again in a few months or next year, and we'll be looking at how we can continue to make it better. It's a process. Uh, let me jump into Eric there, Michael, and then I'll come back to you. Sorry, I had to unmute. So no I'm just, I'm looking at the requirements for CPL for a, you know, a potential client who wants to take a training in it. Okay. And... They have to have an ACA level one skills assessment. Um, so I guess I'm, what does the CPL let them do that the skills assessment doesn't already? Is it just the like sort of the, the multi-craft rescues component? Well, you're in conditions up to level two conditions. So up to 10 knot wind, up to one knot of okay. current, up to a foot of waves. You can be, uh, have minimal boat traffic. So there actually could be a boat around somewhere, you know, like most places have. Um, you can lead people. <laughs> so level one would not be able to do that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a step up. You're not, what we're saying though, is that the reason, so one question that comes up or maybe people are thinking about in their head, well, why not a level two skills assessment if you're approaching level two conditions? And the answer to that is we want to know at level one, at least we, we have an understanding. They passed a level one skills assessment. They understand the concepts of paddling. But they don't need to know everything at level two to be able to function in a little bit of wind or a little current or a little chop. Like we all know that's the case. Like people that have never paddled go to the store, they buy their boat, they go out there and they paddle and that stuff all the time without any of us. And they do fine. What they don't do fine with is understanding the environment and the challenges that the environment um, presents and how to manage those and how to have personal leadership and leadership of their friends or their team. And that's what this is really starting to address to Eric is like, this is what we want the focus on. 
Um, and then hopefully they get turned on to them like, oh, you know what? I should probably be a better paddler. And then they journey on deeper into the experience. Uh, Michael. Okay. So Did that thank help? You. Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. So thinking about the marketing and the audience for this and being camps and youth leaders, and, and I think it's really well tailored for what they need. But thinking about that group and experiencing some of the pushback I'm getting from some members of it, they're largely youth leaders or volunteers. The $40 a year to maintain it by membership cost is a little bit high. And I was wondering, you know, and I'm getting quite a bit of pushback on that. I'm wondering if there might be a possibility of institute or implementing some sort of a PSF slash CPL membership fee that's lower interesting it's a good a great question that's something we can pursue yeah the idea of you know what 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 i have experienced and heard and and learned and i still i just read the document again i see that they're calling it non-renewable and i understand the intent of calling it non-renewable but i i think that term is really inappropriate because it really um they did that with PSF, one year non-renewable. And what people thought was they couldn't even get a, again. Like it says non-renewable, like, you know what I mean? So they just totally checked out and disengaged with the ACA, by the way. So the idea is that, you know, what we'd like to do, and this was just rolled out. And in fact, in the motion, when it was passed last year, it said that in the, in the next uh, two years that we will have a virtual update module that they will take to continue after that four years to re-update themselves because we want them to be members, right? We don't need them to be members of the SEIC, but we want them to be ACA members and be engaged and connected and a part of our organization. And that's, that's what this is doing so that we still have contact with them. And that's the reason for it. And that way you don't have to take the course every year like you would have in the past with the PSF, which nobody I'm sure ever did. Um, so that's the intent of that. Whether we could do it at a discounted rate, that's a, a really interesting uh, idea. And so we should definitely explore that. Yeah, I'm thinking more, that. more members at a lower rate is going to mean a better bottom line than fewer members that are unhappy. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I would say, you know, if, if people are unhappy, it's, it's and this is something that we, um, I think we all have opportunities to do and think about how to do. And maybe we need to have some learning around that. There's so many things we want to do. Um, but is that idea, and Anna, you're so good at this, is, is, is selling the value of, you know, people push back, it's too many days. Well, guess what? This is what it takes to have this type of leader, right? This is what it takes for this to occur. And selling the value of that membership to where it's like 40 bucks, it's 40 bucks, that's nothing. Um, and right now people don't see it that way. And that's, that's on us for making the sell. I mean, to be quite honest, Andrea. Yeah, I just, oh, sorry, Andrea. No, go no, ahead. Anna, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was, I was going to sell, and it's not a sell. It's, com it's communicating value, uh, and val and, and not when someone says it's too expensive, not just, I mean, not just caving to that, so to speak, but really saying, well, in a thoughtful way, well, here are the benefits and the ACA needs to do a better job. And at the board level, we, we are all very aware of that, like at the ACA board level, and we're working on it. Andrea's on the board as well. So we're aware that the, we need to do a better job with benefits. The other um, thing that, just so you know, in the past, and actually Beth, the executive director, talked about this at our last board meeting, in our in-person board meeting, is in the past, the ACA did try to do lower rates for membership, and it didn't work. It didn't work. And that the ACA has actually become more solvent and is doing much better financially now that we've raised the membership rates. Like there's the, there is a, there is a, and it's the numbers, Michael, I'm not making this up. It's just, it's you, we can, you know, Man. the spreadsheets <laughs> that, I, that I've seen. So there's nothing to argue with. It's just what's so. And, and so I'm not saying that it's not a good idea to consider different ways or tiered ways. The ACA needs a certain amount of money to, <laughs> 
to uh, survive and hopefully thrive. And we're really small. And in the past, we have been on the brink of not surviving. And, and none of us want that. And so I just think that it's important for us to keep that in mind when we're communicating value as well, that, that there is cost to running the organization. So Andrea, go ahead. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, no, no, I, it's, I mean, Anna, as you so eloquently said, I mean, the board is having this actively having conversations like this, and we're very wary because we saw what happened when um, they lowered the dues, but did not do the commensurate marketing campaign to increase the numbers, and we almost went bankrupt, you know, I mean, that, that's real, that happened. Um, I do hear Michael, though, because in the marketplace, I get some of the same pushback around PSF already. It's a four-year cert now based on the vote SEIC took last year. Um, but I'm not seeing a lot of people pay that $40 dues the second, third, and fourth year. Um, and I know I've got target audiences of, uh, of state employees, of um, you know just lots of folks, that if there were a version of a four-year membership that they could pay for at the same time they got their PSF or CPL mm. that they would go ahead and pay the four years up front and have that search and not have to worry about it and have large bodies of employees yeah. and, and and trip leaders be certified sure so I, I do think there's a conversation that, that we'll need to keep having there and I'm very intrigued by that idea it's a great yeah, idea. Just, just to be clear, though, before they switched PSF to a four year, it was one year and you had to take the whole course over. That's right. So nobody did it at all, which would have been even more cost prohibitive. So no, no, you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But even with the four year, I mean, are you guys seeing people pay the dues the second, third and fourth year? Because well, I'm, I'm not we seeing it. There hasn't even been an opportunity for the flip yet. So I don't. Yeah. So that yeah. just happened. We, there's too early to tell. Rachel. Good point. So I like it. I love the, the four-year membership idea. Yeah, I was just going to throw out if we would consider organizational membership, because I know like with yeah. Cleveland Metro Parks, you know, I pay seven, eight hundred dollars a year. And if we had organizational where we paid something like that and we 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 would have more people in PSF and all that, it just gets to be too expensive at some point. Um, so just wondering if that would be considered. Yeah, I think, didn't they used to have that? Am I mistaken? There used to be a- There no? used to be a family, but I don't think they've ever had an organizational. They've got PAC and affiliated org. Um, professional. And Anna, Anna and Trey, that's on the board committee for RAC agenda for next month. If either of you want to come to that meeting, it's it's the initial conversation. It's not like you'd be jumping in midstream. It's the beginning. Great. That's great. And I think that getting that information to- um, and Andrea, you, you all, the rack is great. So y'all will do a great job getting these stories from organizations and why they want it and how it would work and how it would benefit would be really important, I think, mm -hmm. to yeah. bring to the board level. So if y'all you know, you are very welcome to be part of that, even at the very beginning stages. Um, if you don't mind, Rachel, is your hand still up or you? I do, I do have one other question, but okay, if yours yeah. is similar, you can go. Uh, I was just going to ask, as far as cost of CPL, um, are you guys charging similar to what you would for an instructor course because it's the same amount of time, or are you doing it for less just out of curiosity? Um, I mean, the base rate for me would be the same, and then it would just depend on the situation would be my answer. Okay, cool. Um, just, I just want to give the, the rest of the, the meeting a heads up. I'm going to answer Joan's question, and then I'm just going to randomly call on people to see why you're here and what we can learn from you. So um, it could be you next. <laughs> Joan, what, what can we do for you? Okay, for me, almost all of my teaching is volunteer for um, Scouting BSA, Girl Scouts, various um, organizations. Yeah. The big thing that there's an issue in my area is there are no other instructor trainers. And so to get the instructor certification, um, the, I, went, I ended up going from central Pennsylvania. I traveled five hours. I drove five hours to take a course and come back. And so if, if we could get an IT, if there's any ITs that are willing to travel, it 
would be a lot cheaper for us to pay a decent amount for an IT. Yeah. But have them we come all travel. Everybody else travel. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely people that are willing to travel. And I think, and, and I don't want to get too sidetracked on this, but it's a great, a, a, a huge issue. We hear it all the time. And I know Andrea hears it all the time. And so we hear it all the time because Andrea hears it all the time. <laughs> That's um, me. <laughs> yeah, but but it's good. But but I think that's part of what the the RAC that she's talking about are, is working on trying to connect more people to ITs in their regions and finding ITs that are more w willing to travel and how we're going to structure that. So that is totally in our in our field of view, and and at different levels is trying to be addressed. But you can always, you know, um, yeah, r reach out. Like even I, yeah. Like I know when I, I just started going down the list trying to find an ID and then then you brought them in or you traveled to them. That's always kind of been the way. But I think that that's being looked at for sure. And we understand it. Okay, let's see here. Let's find out why Jake Vitak is here. If he hey, is. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Hey, Jake. <laughs> Hi, Andrew, and Trey, and Anna, everybody. Um, so... I'm into this uh, more, and I got my ears really perked up on the institutional um, fee because uh, I work as a, a ranger for the North Carolina State Park Service, and uh, I know that's something that would be very encouraging as we start to build um, our teaching teams in a lot of these different parks. Um, if we had a, an institutional one and how that would work, I don't know. But that would be very interesting. I perked up on that. Um, now, why am I into the community paddle sport leader thing? Is the Park Service adds hundreds of seasonal employees every summer to uh, help with everything. Um, a lot of these seasonals are, well, some of them are just doing it for part-time work, but a lot of them use it as an opportunity to uh, look at going into the career field of whether it's a park ranger job or whatever it may be. So to give them additional certifications that they can take with them uh, is something I liked about the, the, the paddle sport facility there because there are parks that have uh, seasonal staff that rent boats, rent canoes, rent kayaks, and stand up paddle boards. So getting them some type of uh, ACA certification was the, the main goal of why I was looking at this. Um, and then on the other side of it is they're only here for a short period of time. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that if there were 15 more of me, uh, which I'm trying to make 15 more of me and mm -hmm. I'm getting there, uh, but I wanna be able to start putting this out in the springtime, uh, right when these folks are getting hired on. Now, most parks hire these people in right around Memorial Day and then the park service is slammed. So when it comes to finding the time to do that, uh, we're actually looking at additional staff that would be available to do that. Uh, so we have an education team out right. of Rock, they're building up their ranks, and I'm working with them to try to get more and more ACA instructors at the levels they need to be to start teaching this stuff and going out. But once again, a lot of these folks are employees who, um, have a lot on their plate anyway, and I'm asking them to take on additional responsibilities. And they're saying, well, do I get any extra you know, money for this? And I say, no, but it's good training and it's something you can take with you and, and move on. Yeah, um, yeah. And you, yeah. you can totally make the case that whatever they learn in, the, in that CPL course totally transfers to anything that they do in life. Like it is like, it, that's more of what it is really. It's not even paddling. We're using paddling as the vessel, but um to do that and what's exciting about what you just said is that what the cpl really uh, one way to think of it, it is it's a p it's a psf but you can go on the water right so paddle sport safety facilitator is you're you're on land giving people you know tips on how to do stuff and letting them know what's up with the cpl you can be on the water with people and that's one of the the big differentiators of it as well Let's hear from uh, PSF. If you're if you're teaching a student class, there's an on water component. Yeah. So let's not get confused. And this is what gets really twisty. So if you have earned the PSF certificate, you are land based. You're giving stuff land based. You personally could be in the water to demonstrate something. 
but you can't have the people that you're working with in the water. That's not true. Yeah. It's BSF requires you to what, actually have Andrea, them swim Andrea, the boat to shore. Andrea, please. It's 100% <laughs> true. Now, if you're an instructor with the endorsement, that's different. And if you're a candidate for the certificate, you will be in the water doing stuff. Yes. But if you earn the certificate, which is what I just right, right, said, right, right, right. Okay. you are land-based. And I, I'm, this gets so conflated. And this is one of my points because um, it, it, it's very confusing. I, I agree. That's why I'm trying to be, that's why I'm being harsh a little bit. Just like- No, no, really I, I can take it. You're good. <laughs> um, because cause it gets twisted a lot, a lot. I mean, it's easy to do. Um, and the other thing that's cool too, is that uh, to, to Jake's point, and really for you too, Joan, once you get an IT down there to, to get some instructors going, is that this is a certificate, an on-water certi certification that an instructor can deliver. It's one of the only ones, like instructors can't deliver this. Like, so this is really given this whole thing, like, and people have to have skills assessments. So what does that mean? They're gonna go get skills assessments from their local level one and level two instructors. Like it's going to drive participation and and people engaging with this content and with each other um, as it starts to perpetuate itself. Uh, hey, hey, Philip, why are you here? Hi, so I'm basically here today just to learn about it. I'm a level two instructor out of New York City, awesome. and I work with many, many local groups who would like to get their people on the water. Um, and unfortunately, New York City is totally different just because of the environment we're in. Uh, but they have to rely on people like myself to donate their time. And I'm very lucky I'm retired. I want to give back. I'm on the water five days a week with five different groups doing a program a day, usually in the evening when people come back from work. But they'd like to run their own. So I'm just trying to figure out a way um, I don't have the endorsements for this. I've been looking into it. So that's the first thing I plan to do. Um, right. But I'm just here to learn about it all because, as you said, I read it online on the ACA website, and I was totally confused about what any of it is. Sure. Yep. As to be expected. And so... <laughs> Uh, but we're working on like that's that's why we're doing this little get together right here so that I can pull this together and have a a little bit of an explanation and a sharing with people of what it is just a short little video and then some accompanying notes that'll go along with that curriculum right there and I think and that's the experiment we want to do that kind of thing with everything but at least to get started we're going to give it a go with this I think um, how about one of the Kellys I see two Kellys whoever speaks first I'm Kelly Rose hi Hey, I am not certified in anything. I enjoy paddling. I paddle in group situations. I've been a, a guide on the Detroit River with some tours and I've seen some things and <laughs> I know that uh, leadership is important. So when I saw this in the newsletter, I thought I would just listen in. I don't know if getting any kind of endorsement is in my future, but I just thought I would listen in and see what it's about and uh, get a glimpse. Right. Well, glad you're here. And that's just so awesome. Like that you saw this in the newsletter. You're not, and it just shows that we do have reach beyond just instructors. Um, and I think that's really powerful. You know, we're talking about membership and the value of membership. So thanks for being here. And it's definitely something that you could earn. Um, and what I think would be a value to the, the stuff that you were just describing. So, because it is just leadership, right? It's just, uh, and and in, in engaging, uh, I'll show you a little little something on leadership here when we're about wrapping up that we used at the one that I delivered in Iowa, um, but about engaging your team to be leaders with you. And um, yeah, how about Kelly Rudolph, the other Kelly? I'm sorry, Anna, then I'll grab you. Hello, um, I am the new Ohio State Director and I am here to learn about the program and, you know, potentially uh, get the endorsement later on, but just become a more competent state director. Awesome. So again, just for clarity's sake, this is not an endorsement. There is no such oh, okay. thing as a CPL endorsement. You earn the certificate, you've passed the course, you're good to go. If you're a level two instructor who happens to have PSF credentials, then you can deliver the course. Okay, there is no CPL endorsement. 
Okay. <laughs> that will be not the last time I make that point. <laughs> A nickel for every time, Trey. Yeah, it's all good. Anna. That's what I was going to say. That oh. I, I Because three people in a row taught, uh, called it an endorsement. Yeah, it's hard. And it's something that we're looking at within SEIC too, because we have endorsements, assessments. Uh, what else do we have? Certifications. Certifications. <clears throat> and so it can get confusing. And we're really looking to streamline. But this, the CPL is a certification. It's just not an instructor certification. It's a leadership certification. And I think that's really cool. Uh, Eric, you got your hand up there. Yeah, what does all that mean? Like the fact that it's a certification, why you guys, you guys keep emphasizing certification versus endorsement, but what, you know, I'm a guide in an outfitter. Why do I care what what the name of it is? Well, so because it because of ACA <laughs> vernacular <laughs> and language and culture and heritage, um, things get twisted up and you know words. Some some things in the ACA. My understanding is that the certifications were to delineate between being able to get insurance or not as a as a provider. So an instructor could pull ACA insurance, but a, a, an assessed trip leader could not. Um, but that's really, that was just what people said. There's no policy that, that says that you couldn't call something else a certification. It doesn't mean the certification doesn't mean insurance. Insurance means insurance. It just, so that's, that's why. And a lot of entities wanted the word certification because there are the, the camps and the stakeholders wanting a certification for their insurance because it sounds better or something to that impact. So when they did PSF, they called it a certification for that reason. And we're just building off of that. I know that probably didn't clear it up completely, but that's why. An endorsement, according to the ACA, is if you're an instructor and you take on some additional knowledge that's outside your original scope of what you became certified in, then you can be endorsed to teach this additional stuff. I would make the argument that none of this is, other than the multi-craft aspect, really additional. Um, this is stuff that I would present in an instructor course. I, I know that not all people do, but but an, that's what an endorsement is. And so we that was like a whole nother thing that you would have to do. And so that's the part that we've taken out of this so that it's simpler and cleaner. Um, you just, if you take the course and you earn the cert certification and you're an instructor, then you're good to go as long as you have PSF. Michael. Good question. Just on marketability. So I'm a little confused from a couple of things that got stated earlier. Is this a four-year or a one-year certification? Four years. Excellent. As long as you maintain That's what certification. I've been telling people. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. It's, it's, it's always been four years. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not even a year old, but it's, it's been four. That's how it, that's how it came out. And then we'll roll out a, an updating, a virtual update uh, component as we approach the first four years. So before that first four years rolls over, we'll give people the opportunities to do that. That's the plan. I just wanted to confirm that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, anytime we can get more clarity, it's good. Okay, how about, let's see, who haven't we heard from? Lisa, why are you here? Hi, everybody. Um, and so we're in Northern Michigan and a lot of camps and organizations up here are looking for something uh, for their, you know, waterfront people. So I'm here to make sure I understand exactly what we're offering and how to offer it. And uh, this has been very helpful. So thank you. You're welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Jake, you raised your hand. I'm muted. Sorry. Hey, uh, yeah, thanks. I, I just want to say, you know, we're in, we're in Florida here and uh, we run a youth network where we loan kayaks to organizations that go on and use them with youth and family programs. And for, for years, we did L1, L2 kayak. We had canoe as well. Um, more recently, we've, we've, we've allowed trip leader training um, endorsement to, to work as well. And that's been very popular because it's often a lower price range. And it's easier for those organizations to attend. Do you, do you see this kind of in the same wheelhouse? I mean, it's it's mentioned on the same page in the ACA as as the essentials of kayak touring trip leader assessment. Yeah, I mean, I we see it as the precursor to trip leaders. 
Okay. Right. So we're not calling them trip leaders because, and it says on the document, you know, we're talking about outing. So you're in a contained space. You're not taking trips with this award. Um, right. That would be the trip leader. That's the next step. This is just that you can go out and come back. You have, you're close to stuff and we don't want to put that extra element. That was a debate about how we did this, but we decided just to keep, let's make this the entry level, the jump in point to a leadership track that, you know, inside, you know, pull back the curtain, what we're talking about a lot of us and there's movement towards, and I think you'll start to see some of this or hear some of this in the background is making trip leaders, multi-discipline, multi-craft. And it's just, you get a trip leader, you plug in a skills assessment with it and you're good to go as a trip leader up to level three, maybe like levels two and three would be the same trip leader award. And then if it's a, a more intense environment or a more demanding environment, longer distance, that might be a different thing. Or again, just putting this out mm -hmm. there, not to confuse or conflate. The other thought is that you have trip leaders, which are just doing day trips, you can plug in a skills assessment for your environment where you're leading these trips, or you have guides and guides are that next level of professionalism where now we're saying, Hey, these people are, are dialed to be responsible for your people. They're, they're taking it to a professional level, not just at a club or a casual kind of um, low impact for lack of a better term level. Mm -hmm. Just stuff that's floating around and in the ether, but trying to simplify it even more that way so that it's not, so it, it, it's quite a, it's quite a bit of stuff right now. The, the group management aspect of the trip leader trainings have been awesome. Yeah, we I, I couldn't count any partner that I knew that they got L two and then did skills training for their kids, but they definitely used group management a lot. So I, I right. really like this. this yeah, to me, it just seems like this should be the the jumping off point for anything you want to do with people. <laughs> like. You can either learn how to paddle. That's great. Do our skills progressions and all that. But if you wanted to be an instructor or a trip leader, then you jump in at this point right here, because this is that baseline. And again, right before we leave here in the next five minutes, I'll pop up on the screen, just some stuff I jotted down with the help of the, the people that attended that first one. I let them build the course. So the stuff that you're seeing, we built together. wasn't like, Hey, Trey said we should do this. Sure. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Rachel. Just curious on how this is formatted. Are you having the candidates do teaching topics or this is not an instructor course and so they're not teaching or they're kind of leading people so you are? I'm just curious how you're setting that up. Well, you're definitely not teaching, right? Because it's not teaching. Um, they don't have, there has nothing to do really with instruction other than sharing. So there's sharing of information, um, which is what a lot of our teachers do anyways because they don't really teach. Sorry. Yeah, I guess like sorry. on land topics and uh, stuff like that, right? Yeah. Well, even on water though, you got, Hey, you might want to flip your paddle this way. And if you push on your foot, when you put your paddle in the water, your boat might go a little bit further. Um, they could do that kind of stuff because that's just sharing tips. Um, you're not creating learning sessions and trying to, to, to develop a, a progression and things like that. That's not happening. And so more of the stuff that they're doing in the course, and I'm happy to get deeper into this, give you some suggestions on some of the stuff that I've done. I'm sure Anna has stuff. Well, I'm sure everybody has their own stuff. That's why I wanted to let it be open for people to do it how they wanted. But we're doing stuff where they are leading each other. We're doing experiments. We're having them play around with deciding on how they're figuring out equipment, how they're sorting people out, how they're being efficient in getting people sorted out in their equipment. You know, all those things that hang everybody up when they're trying to get a group on the water, how they're deciding the venue, why they made that choice, what's the backup, all those types of things are the things that are being looked at. And then they get a role play that stuff, just like you would if it was a teaching scenario, but it's not teaching. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, Joan, you have your hand up. Okay. I just have, um, let's see. I just have a quick offer to make as one of the things that is one of my skills is I'm a lifeguarding instructor, a wilderness first aid instructor. Obviously that includes first aid, CPR, AED. And I have my own gear, including my own mannequins and stuff. Wow. So if people need that, I, agree, yeah. I that is one of the things that because I have my own gear, I don't have to worry about renting it. I have it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't mind, you know, as I said, I'm in central Pennsylvania, pretty much. New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Maryland, Virginia, you know, pretty much the, the middle Atlantic and some of the Northeast, you know, I'm, 
I'm willing, willing to go and that I can actually certify people in. Excellent. So, you know, this brings up, uh, we could go on for hours. It's so fun. Um, and I'm happy to hang out for a bit. So, but you know, it'd be great to have a place, not Facebook, a place on the ACA website or some way where people like, because people are always looking for that stuff. Like, and it's like, Hey, willing to trade you know, WFA for an IT to come or something like that. Or we could build these courses together. And there's really no way for us effectively right now to network. And so I, I want to make sure we think about that and or like put that somewhere in our brains. Um, that would be super useful. And then people should reach out to uh, Joan if they need that and grab her email address. Put your email address in the chat for sure. Anna, you had a, your hand up. And then I'm going to call on Anthea, so get ready. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to address Rachel's question as well. And Rachel, what I think what's yeah, we're not, I never gave teaching a topic assignments. Um, <clears throat> what was really cool, one thing that I just want, I want to share is that they did a group assignment where they, they co-led in groups and they had to send out pre-trip information and they made like amazing graphics in Canva and they had to send that out to the other group um you know and they had to choose you know, everything that that's in the curriculum of the cpl right it's about leadership you know group management rescues uh pre-trip information and so that was a really fun um i guess assignment but i would i didn't think of it as a teaching assignment it was more of a i guess it was a scenario um yeah. and i really pushed them to be the leads and step back and also what I loved about it is having people work in teams is so much more fun and something that I'm actually trying to incorporate into my ICWs as well, which is a little bit more challenging when you have to observe everyone teaching um, a specific to or just specific topic. So I'll just, I'll just leave that there again. I could go on forever. I've got to jump everyone. Thank you so yeah. much. Trey, thank you for organizing this. Um, it's so great to hear from everyone. And um Email me if you have questions, Anna at mindbodypaddle.com. Thanks. See Anna. Yeah, so this is the um, the the document that uh, our team put together in Iowa of what like leadership looks like. Y'all see that? Lead from within, yeah. not from without. Always be modeling the behavior you want to see. Honestly, assess risk. Like we all struggle with that. Continually manage ourselves and our team to that ongoing assessment. Personal comfort zone needs to be higher than the people that you're leading. Uh, as a as a group, right? So as that whole group, there may be individuals that are better than you, but as a group, you need to be comfortable. Um, it's about your team, not you. We need to meet people where they are. And this is a big one, not where we want them to be. That is that is huge. And that's why we're doing this, right? It's not like, oh, you have to have a kayak or you have to have this. You have whatever you have. Let's go for a paddle. Be present, be open, and trust yourself. Yeah, let's hear from... Yes. I, I just, just as a, I, I know you already said this, but I'm very interested in all these documents you're putting up. So yeah, I, I sure. just want to re reiterate, would love to see the follow. And there, there are only a way and there are only suggestions that you should be riffing off of and getting creative upon. It's not the way that it has to be done. All we ask is that you meet those criteria, which a lot of them are, are, are pretty I think they're pretty clear, actually. And that's, you know, one of the other things we talked about reasons that we did this, but we've always talked about leadership in the ACA. And, and we mentioned it kind of along the side, but we never really described like what leadership was. And I think that these, at an entry point, that idea of collaborating, admitting your mistakes, bringing your participants into the decision-making process, like all those kind of things are just base leadership skills that we should, I, I think we should, oh, so I'll use the word should, that we should be employing. Um, and I think that you've seen too, as a result of our ITE conference that we hosted back in uh, November, 
that from the top down now, they all came up with some pretty specific uh, descriptions and criteria for what positive interpersonal skills actually are and look like. And that's trickled down through, you'll see it in the documents when you start looking, That's and it's in the SEIC policy now, that's trickled down through to instructor trainers and instructors as well. So it's pretty exciting, actually. Um, with the caveat that this stuff, as you all probably know that have been involved with it at all, takes a long time. So we have to be patient. Like this is just like five years from now is when it should be really dialed in. Like it's going to take a minute. So be patient. Uh, let's see. We haven't heard from Anthea. Hi, California State Director. Um, oh, cool. And wow. I'm here for, I guess, selfish reasons. I just a lot of different settings. I've been in where both community paddle sport leader and a uh, paddle sport safety facilitator could be relevant to the people who I have to get up to speed really fast. I need help. And a lot of people are not paddlers. A lot of people have no idea what it means to be uh, leading, but also being part of a group that's trying to get people down the water. And I think these are all tools that are really important to that process. And um, I'm just, of course, still trying to sort out in my mind the difference between paddle sport safety facilitator and community yeah. paddle sport uh, leader. Yeah. And um, so that's kind of at, at the, the bottom of why I'm here. But these are, you know, these are, I mean, and hi, Phil Giller, who 20 years ago, uh, he and I at Sebago put people out on the water to lead trips who uh, barely had any experience leading people on the water. So I, you know, I've been thinking about this question for a long time. And I just, I think it's, it's really where so many people find themselves and where so many people supervising these people find themselves, you know, is how do we, how do we create a consistent vocabulary and approach? And this is a tool to do that. Excellent. Thanks for that. Yeah. I'll tell you a real quick story about my experience with doing this course in Iowa as part of the lead program. Uh, I, I was asked to go deliver that program and um, was really, really nervous about it. I, I get nervous. And because I was going to be the only white person, uh, white male, old white male, at this event. Everybody was from Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico. And here I am coming in to tell them how to be leaders, right? And how to paddle and how to do this, which made me super, um, not uncomfortable, but I just felt like really challenged by like, how is this gonna go, you know? And so what we did is we just all sat down that first morning and we, that's when we sketched out the course and we empowered them right there. What did they bring? What do you all bring to this? How are we gonna build this course to fulfill and leverage the skills that you've already brought to this. I don't care if you can paddle, it doesn't matter. And we were in an environment that, had, it was like this super cold weekend in Iowa, in Des Moines, literally 45 degree water and 50 degree air. I brought all the dry suits I could rally up from my shop, you know, all misfit sizes and stuff. A lot of these women had never even been in the water, like in the water intentionally. Uh, much less underwater in dry suits doing rescues. And they just loved it. Like they just, they were so like timid at first and then they're doing selfies out there and taking pictures and totally building into it. And Jake, I know that you know because of some of the folks that were involved, but it really became this thing that brought all these disparate people together all in commonality and they drove the workshop. And I think that's like, when you're delivering these, that's how you need to think about it. It's not you with your curriculum and your list and your outline. You're going to go give this to them. You're going to bring them together. You're going to learn from them. And then you're going to chart out what you're going to work on. Now, yeah, are we, do we have our little things that we got to sneak in here to make sure we're meeting the, the standards of the curriculum? For sure. But if we go in with this list to tell them that, that, is the, that right there in and of itself is not the leadership that we're trying to model. Right. So we don't need to be the boss. We don't need to be the supervisor. We don't need to be the dogmatic leader. Right. We want to empower them to lead themselves. And it takes everybody into a really amazing place. David Ford, we haven't heard from you. Oh, good. Unmuted. Uh, after you and Paul and I talked about our L2 River update, I went and looked at uh, both of the uh, curriculums. 
And when I was reading it and looking at it, it's like, this is what people really need. They need to go out there. They want to go out and have fun, but it also teaches them how to be safe on the water and sort things out. And I know the programs that I do or Paul and I do together, that's really what they yep. want. Then we can give them, you know, more skills later on, but that is, that's right. that's a great starting point. Yeah, right on. Thanks for that, David. Yeah, you're, I mean, that's exactly it. <laughs> that is exactly it. Uh, let's see who, we didn't hear from Luke. Luke, what do you got? Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Luke. I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we are with a nonprofit that's geared towards removing barriers to get people outdoors. Love it. Uh, we've been offering paddle sports like rentals and classes for quite a long time. Uh, we're trying to broaden what we offer uh, as far as ACA courses. So uh, that's what brings me here this evening to hear what the uh, CPL was all about and how that could potentially benefit uh, the folks who we're serving. Great. And do you feel, <laughs> and how do you feel after an hour of this? <laughs> uh, more enlightened than when I started, that's for sure. Okay, but not discouraged? No, 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 not discouraged. Okay. I, it, it took a minute, but I, I, I understand what we're getting at now, that it's more of a, uh, more of a leadership, more of a collaborative class approach than a, you know, skills driven, like that's right. curriculum delivered. Yeah. So that, yep, that makes right. sense. Yeah. Great. Anybody else want to chime in with anything? Yeah. Eric. So, um, my background prior to my current role is in environmental education and um, working with schools to meet PE requirements of outdoor activities, things like that. And um, from that perspective, I love the idea of this CPL because it gives so many more tools for schools and nonprofits to get kids outside. Um, but in my current role as the manager of an outfitter um, with you know a team of guides and instructors, I'm sort of struggling to figure out how it makes sense to offer the CPL because we need to have our instructors get, you know, be certified in multiple different disciplines. We need to have them get the special CPL cert on top of that. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's, I'm sort of having this chicken and egg problem of like, will there be enough demand from camps, from schools, from scouts, things like that to justify doing it? Or slash like, will we be ready to offer it when that demand does exist. And I'm, I'm sort of struggling with how to, um, so on the one hand, I love it, but on the other hand, I'm sort of struggling with how to start doing it. Is yeah. So I, one, just one thing to clear up, uh, maybe it kind of got twisted up. Again, it's less certifications that you need. So like if to take people out in multiple craft, right now into anything besides a pond, well, it, onto anything, any water, you would have to be a certified instructor or trip leader in each of those crafts. Like that's a minimum of eight to 10 days of training. And so what this enables you to do, you, you only have to be proficient in the craft of your choice, whatever you like to paddle. Right. My, my concern is, um, is for, for my staff who would be running a course Get people CPL certified. Yep. Um, because if I'm reading the requirements correctly, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, they have to have an either an L3 or an L2 with an endorsement in two different disciplines, and they have to have uh the it says familiarity with the CPL certification. Um, am I so yeah, that's so a lot for you know my instructors if I'm if I'm understanding it correctly. Uh, so I think um, you may not be. So they have to have a PSF. So a PSF award you earn in six hours, seven hours. And that you, for all three craft, okay? There's, that's it, okay? Then as an instructor, they're good to go after they've taken the CPL course. Okay, so my staff just need the instructor cert they already have because they're working as instructors and then um, the PSF. Yep. Now, if 
okay. they want to offer the PSF, they have to have a skills assessment in the craft that they're that in another craft for the different modules of CPL. So in other words, if they're a level two instructor, let's say, and let's say kayak, and they want to deliver that, that PSF prior as part of this course, they want to be able to help the people with the prerequisites, then they would have to have a skills assessment in any of the other modules that they're offering a PSF in. But again, that's just a level one skills assessment. And I would make the case that most, I mean, I'll let you all jump in here, but I feel like if I have a level two instructor, I could get them to a level one skills assessment in the other craft pretty quickly, like within a couple of days, if they went and practice, if they took a class and went and practice, um, they would be able to pass a level one skills assessment. Yeah, totally. I was, I think I was misunderstanding the, um, the criteria needed to offer the CPL cert. And that was yeah. my concern. So cool. I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you less, asked much less concerned now. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Cause I think it, it definitely has a lot of a broad reach once it gets, once we get it sorted out. Thanks for that question. Yeah, so we've got to figure out a way to clean up the, the way this, and this is great. I mean, that's why I'm doing this. because We want to refine this stuff. So there's some language that we can work to make that even cleaner sounding. I've just got to figure out what it is. What's that, Rachel? His staff would also have to take the CPL course themselves before they yeah. can teach it if they're not IT. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, just yeah, as an instructor, sure. you have to go through one first, for yeah. sure. Yep, yeah. ITs right. do not... Um, but instructors, yep. do. but you don't have to do an endorsement part of it. Right. Right. There's no endorsement for it. You just have to take the course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ideally, I mean, ideally you could envision a situation if you were going to picture an ideal world where at least one of your staff has gone through the CPL, you've got a certified kayak instructor, a certified canoe instructor, a certified sub instructor, you know, somebody gets the PSF in, in, their craft or all the craft, right? Yep. And then you team teach. That's right. Yeah. And what this really does is, again, for people like Joan and probably you, um, Eric, and, and folks that seem to be in places where they can't find ITs that we hear all the time, this is allowing people to, to not have to have the, we're not trying to take work away from the ITs because they still kind of do instructors and we need instructors to do this stuff. But it's going to let instructors drive these some of this training that before you would have to have a, an IT in house, and that was all. I, I think a lot of you have had the experience where you get called out to deliver a course, and especially if you're an IT, and they say, "Well, we want you to train somebody so that they can certify our people." Like that, you hear that <laughs> at least I hear that all the time. And we're like, "Well, that's a whole different program. We're talking about a three to five year, you know, which we're happy to do, but that's not what they're thinking." And so this actually allows staff, just like the description that, that Rachel just gave, where you just get, if you have an instructor in each discipline, then you're good to go. Like then you can certify each other as far as the skills bits go. And then you can all be offering that CPL. And it would be a really good, robust course because at least now we're getting cross-pollination between the craft too. And what you'll see when you run one of these things, it is so fun. Like just watching how people problem solve and deal with mixing things up. It's just super great to see how people sort it out. And um, yeah, it's really, we did one exercise we did that this woman from Tennessee who was assisting me, Lizzie, she had them all in canoe. So here's a little, maybe if, see if I can remember the exercise because I'm trying to steal it. She had everybody in canoes and she said, okay, you have, there were, so there was 10 of them. You have, um, you have two minutes without talking to organize yourselves by um, age in the canoe. So it had to go in descending order in the canoes and line it up, right? So you had to like get up and move from canoe to canoe and things like that, right? So it was kind of cool getting them to move and switch boats and learning all that stuff. And you watch them like just struggling so hard because you have a lot of A-type personalities and people that are pretty strong-willed. But what you really found out at the end was that the people that didn't want to move and created the most to do because they couldn't talk. So it was just like, and just trying to make it difficult were the people that were afraid to get into another canoe, right? They, it, it brought forward that they just weren't comfortable yet in these boats that we needed to back up 
and play on the shore and play around with the boats a little bit more and get more comfortable with our stability and de-escalate the challenge because this person was creating like, oh, I don't understand what you're saying, but it wasn't because they didn't understand the challenge. They were trying to protect themselves from maybe feeling uncomfortable. It was super illuminating. Those are the kind of things that you're doing and they're really powerful when you go through these kinds of experiences because people really bond and start to understand that it's okay to be uncomfortable around each other. And then that just makes everybody more comfortable. And then the course just explodes with support and enthusiasm for each other. Just a really quick piece of feedback, Trey. Yeah. Um, I just pulled up the, you know, the ACA's um, course calendar and there isn't an, there isn't an obvious way to find a CPL course. It's not yeah. its own category. Um, so that great, you know, might be, well, a so you're saying that you couldn't pop that into even, there might not be anybody offering them yet. Cause it's so new, but, but you're it's not even, not even, even an option to out if that's the case. Yeah, exactly. Love it. You know, there's, there's canoe courses, kayak yeah. courses, safety courses, but it's not obvious appreciate how that. for this. Yeah. And, and yeah, no really appreciate that. And real quick, Phil, before I answer your question. One thing to know too, um, and maybe you've noticed now just pulling up the ACA website and looking at it, it looks different. Um, and so we've had Kelsey on a project of reformatting and retemplating everything into live templates for all our curriculum. So things can be changed instantly and it'll go across all curriculum that it needs to go across. It's super awesome. There's going to be bugs in that system. There's going to be things that aren't where they're, they're supposed to be while we're sorting it out. This is brand new. So be patient with it. It's really cool though. Like we'll be able to change curriculum and make corrections or refine stuff. And instead of in the past where she'd have to go in and literally manually change the document as Rachel knows by hand on each document, each level change, each word, that's how it's been done in the past. She can just change the one master, put in the hierarchy of, oh, everything in sub. Oh, and rivers like that too, everything in river, boom, hit the button and it populates throughout the whole thing. So it's really going to refine and, and simplify her work. In doing it, she she took some creative license and, and kind of played around with some stuff. And I, I think if you look at it, the feel is really good. Um, but it's going to be a minute while we kind of sort through that. So don't get too critical on it as you start to look at that stuff. But but bring those things to our attention because we need to know. So that's awesome to hear about the, the calendar thing, which is probably a separate issue. Phil. Yeah, just a one quick uh, guest clarification. We're yeah. talking about this all being multidiscipline, you know, canoe, kayak, SUP. Are you or anyone making a difference between deck boats and sit on tops? No. So then, if you have an SOT uh, instructor, it doesn't matter. I'm just, I, that's the only question I had. Great question. I, okay, great, perfect. So, level two is level two. Like, <laughs> You're talking to the person. <laughs> I'll get pushed back on this. I just got in a big thing with Ryan and and uh, Ryan Russian, who's a CKC chair, and uh, Kelly uh, Henry, and we're working on some level four or five stuff at CKC. And I'm like, why do we have to say it has to be a sea kayak? Like it's a kayak. If you can make it do the stuff it needs to do, and it's rescuable, and it meets all these requirements, then it's a then it's good. Like that's my, my, that's my friend. I don't think we should tell people anything. I think that the environment and the challenges should dictate whether they're, their gear choice. I think it's opportunities for education and learning and bringing people together. Um, most often the environment or maybe the group will say, hey, we don't wanna go paddling with you in a boat that doesn't have deck lines because we can't do rescues on you and it'll be hard and then they don't do it. But I think telling people that you can't have something is is not the right approach. So. To your point, whatever they got, as long as their level two instructor is, is the requirement. Thanks for asking that. Rachel. Just because you were bringing up the changes that Kelsey made, um, yeah. I love the new format. The only thing is I was talking to some people and now it's like eight pages, seven pages to print. I wonder if she could just make the bullets closer so that we're not printing as much. I think it's the bullets closer, maybe, but I think what it is, I know I saw people are bringing it up, SS. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that she, she made the font so much bigger. I think if she brings the font size down, 
even like two or three numbers, it'll probably shave a page or two off. And then maybe there are places where you could tighten some of that up um, and, and link pages so that they're not split between. That's the other thing I don't like. like we could go on and on with this. Uh, that's yeah. why I say it's a start. And it's so exciting. Like you think about all our documentation that she's been able to get onto this stuff now. It is just going to be game changing. It, it really, really, I just can't stress it enough. It's going to be game changing. And you can look at the stuff and it's not so intimidating because it's not that that old, really like, I don't know what font it was called, archaic 510 or something like that. Like it was very difficult to read. And it felt like, who are we? You know, we're the sea kayakers. I want to tell you how to do everything. Um, I probably, I'm going to edit that part out of the recording, but, um, <laughs> I'm just, just being real, just being real. I do all this stuff by the way. So yeah, I think it's great. And she did it for the policy manual too. It's a lot easier. And now you can just click on what you're looking for and it'll take you right there. You don't have to scroll through stuff. If you're not as tech savvy, like I'm not, I don't know how to use that F3 thing or something to search a word or whatever it is, or right click this or that. Yeah. Anybody else? Any any thoughts? Feedback? Was this helpful? Very. We'll probably do another uh, one. We'll, we'll we'll come up with some refinements. I hope I have your email in that document that that Andrea created. And Andrea, can I can you send that to me? I, I made you an owner, so I've already sent it to you. You okay, and Anna great. both. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Um. Yeah, Kelly. I would just like to say that, you know, meetings like this, programs like this are so beneficial and I, I absolutely love them. And if we could have more <laughs> on a variety of topics, I mean, they are very well appreciated. Uh, one of the things that we've talked about, and we're really, um, you know, again, more behind the curtain type stuff, but it's all like, shouldn't be behind the curtain. Um, the ITE conference that that, that we uh, facilitated, and I was the leader for that, another intimidating place to be, hmm. um, but it was super funny and super great. I just blindfolded everybody right at the start and made them do stupid stuff. And, you know, it was awesome. They loved it. See, that's the video um, we need, Trey. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, the, our, and I hired, you know, two facilitators also to, to run the actual program itself. And uh, it was awesome. But one of the things that, that came out of that is we're, we're going to be leveraging our ITE community heavier. Um, I don't see any on this call. And, and part of it is um, having some listening sessions and having some informational sessions and contributing a little bit, um, both with discipline committees in ways that we can have. The, you know, we're all like, it's hard for us all to, we all have lots of, excuse me, meetings that we're in. But I agree with you, Kelly, that it is super valuable. And um, I think it's it's what we need to do. The more connectivity we have, it, it's been my mantra since I volunteered uh, for this organization a little while back. It, that is the most important bit for us. Otherwise, it's just nothing, nothing happens, nothing changes, and it, it actually reinforces uh, things not happening or changing, and we really get stuck. The more stuck you are, the stucker you get. I also think it adds a lot of value to the ACA membership itself. Yeah. Well, and then having a resource page where you can plug into these things and, you know, we're, we're working on, on that where there'll be places where you can go find this stuff a little bit easier and accessible. There's been, there is a lot of stuff that they've done in the past, really valuable stuff that just people couldn't find or didn't even know existed. And so we're working on getting better at making that easier to find, more accessible, and clear as to where you need to be going to, to do it. Any other thoughts? All right. So anytime you need to reach out to me, uh, as some of you on this call know, I'm available. I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. If you need suggestions for if you want to do one of these, you're like, I'm just kind of struggling with how to start it off. Happy to give you any suggestions. It's You're not a, a, a burden on my time. I manage my time. And when I commit my time, um, I'm there. So um, 
we will definitely compile some of these documents and stuff like we said andrea and we'll get those out in a folder we'll email those out to anybody to put their email in that that doc that that andrea started and then eventually we'll get them somewhere living on the aca website i really appreciate all the feedback and the questions it, it helps a lot and so yeah have a good night hey, trey thank you so much for doing this this is huge this is awesome you're welcome yeah i second that thank you you're welcome Thanks, Thank Trey. It's really Thanks, Trey. Have a good night. All right. See you. Good to Thank meet you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.